part-time reseller on Poshmark. I am shipping out my weekend sales, which for the quick rundown looks like this. $587 for 13 orders. One of them was a bundle, so technically 14 items. If you run the ASP on that, it's about $41.92, so that's $42 ASP average sales price. I just want to quickly say, hi, my name is Denise and my beige flag is <laughs> dressing in natural colors, comfy cozy. Here I am out here representing. I was photographing all morning since working on my space yesterday. I am highly motivated to now get that rack photographed. I do have an inventory video coming up because once I get all those things I'm photographed, of course, I'm going to have to put them in my inventory. So I'm going to have a brief conversation about how I do that sale notification. Things are looking good for the weekend. I am happy with $587 in sales and I'm just going to share what I sold, what I'm about to be shipping out. I even have a few um, interesting items to ship out. I just wanted to share my little jelly cat. These are called the Amusables. I got this for Mother's Day for my daughter. She has a little collection of them herself, one of which I've gotten at the bins, and she bought me this one, so I have it now on my workstation. Let's get started right away talking about what I'm sending out. First item I sold on Saturday was a Lululemon crew neck t-shirt. It's just a plain old, feels like it's a Pima cotton. It's not a technical tee. I believe I sized this at around a medium. It is a men's t-shirt. I am shipping it out to a woman and I the only thing I'd like to say about that is please be aware that even though we are kind of forced to categorize clothing. A lot of the times people are shopping on Poshmark by how they like the fit. So people are not paying attention to men's, women's, whatever. People are paying attention to, I like a bigger t-shirt, this is the fit I like, I'm buying this. $30 for this crew neck t-shirt. And I believe I sent out an offer and that was a counter offer that was just a few dollars less than my offer. Now the one thing I feel like reflecting on because I received a few of them this weekend was offers. Okay, so basically I am sending out 15% off offers and I am no longer sending out shipping discounts. What I'm with finding is when I send out my 15% off discount, people are countering me two to three dollars lower than what that offer was. So they are counter offering in a way to offset the cost of not getting a shipping discount. And I am sensing that pattern, so I'm curious. Now, I mean, I could activate offering a shipping discount and just sort of play with that and see if I receive less counter offers and more just sales from the offers that I send out. That would be an interesting little test for me because it's a pattern that I have seen heavily this weekend. 
The next item that I sold was this Abel the Label dress. It kind of has a halter style dress and then a little tie in the back. I'm just going to quickly show you what the Abel the Label looks like. Now I ran, I'm not steaming this. I ran a 50% off sale on dresses this weekend in my closet and as a result of that I actually sold four dresses so I'm really happy about that. They're all dresses that I've had for quite some time. I do have new items that I'm trying to move into my inventory so um, I always like being able to move along items that feel to be like I've had them in my closet long enough. It is the season to entice buyers to be buying dresses. So I actually took advantage of that. I decided to do since I have some time and I have all these items to ship still is that um, I actually just put it in my dryer with some ice and that way it will release some of the wrinkled appearance to it. It's obviously not going to look as good as steamed but it will release them. The next item I am shipping, we're going to pause on that one. The next dress I sold, the next item I sold was a dress. It is a beautiful 100% sil silk dress and I did pick this up at the bins. It is rag and bone. I went back and forth with the buyer on this dress. Um, I had this in my closet for $78 and I did the half price offer. Well, um, the buyer actually countered $30 to me or 30 some dollars to me. Maybe it was actually like $30. $4 and I simply just decided that half price was my lowest. If you are familiar with Rag and Bone, it is a lovely brand. It is a top tier brand. We're talking Nordstrom, Bloomingdale's, you know, very expensive retail pieces. The problem with Rag and Bone is that it really doesn't have a great resale value which is really kind of sad because this dress was 100% silk I decided to price it where I believe a 100% silk dress should be priced at. I'm pretty happy with selling this dress for $39 and that I had purchased it at the bins. Pretty good profit for a bins purchase. The next item I sold is just simply this lovely vintage Mexican. It's sort of like a beachy type dress. Now I did note some of the call outs on this. It is an extra large. It did have a few just discoloration marks in general simply because of the era of this dress. It's older and sometimes even just from storage a dress can begin to have some discoloration spots to it. So I already called them out on this. Now I think this is the cheapest thing that I did sell today. So I do like to add these priority mail stickers just to make sure that the envelope is going to be safe in the shipping process. I always also check on the seal to make sure that the adhesive is working. I found working in my garage in the winter that um, sometimes the seal wasn't very good with the um, envelopes. So that's something to keep in mind. The next item I sold was a Jay McLaughlin dress. This is really lovely, lovely material. It feels like a jersey knit. There's the Jay McLaughlin label. And um, 
A little funny story about this is that it sold for $28. I thought it would sell for more than this. I thought it would sell for maybe closer to $40, $36. I have had it in my closet since last spring. What I just simply wanted to note about it is that I saw someone mention on Instagram how Jay McLaughlin sells very quickly for them. I'm not sure what price point they were selling at. I'm assuming $36, $40, just in my head. If it was $15, I wouldn't have considered picking it up. So I thought, okay, I saw this Jay McLaughlin dress shortly after that. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna see how Jay McLaughlin does for me. So as far as Jay McLaughlin, I don't have a very wide knowledge base on what the most popular styles of Jay McLaughlin dresses are. So I can't speak to that. I can only kind of speak to what my experience was. And I do think this dress was a really lovely colorway. It's a little bit under what I want my average sales price to be. And I am really looking to sell things 36 to 40 dollars 45 dollars so 28 dollars is not bad but it really did cut into my profit margin i probably paid eight seven or eight dollars for this dress so after posh fees i only did really walk away with a little bit less than 20 dollars on this item which is great it's fine it took a long time for it to sell too. So if it sold quickly for $28, I may have a different opinion about it. But since it took like a year in my closet to sell, then for me, Jay McLaughlin is just not a brand that I would seek out or really pick up. Of course, there's always exceptions to every rule. If I were to understand what maybe is more sought after for Jay McLaughlin and I was to come across that, then of course I would pick it up. I to say that this moment brings up for me. One, I recognize that my strengths as a reseller don't lie in my ability to pick out dresses that people are seeking out. It tends to be an area that I sometimes lean into and try to grow my knowledge base, but I simply don't have the best luck or I just seem to pick up items that are more long tail when it comes to dresses. So the next item I am selling or I sold is, oh, I don't know if you guys were around for this story. This was recently in my little bit of a customer gripe video <laughs> that I had not too long ago. So I had a woman buy this Babaton cardigan sweater from me, brand new with tags. And after the item was delivered, she reached out to me and said, oh, that's the wrong address. Now, I'm just going to generally say it, but um, I shipped the dress to New York City and I went back and forth if I would resell the item to her again because, to be honest, it was a little bit of a hassle. I had to wait over two weeks to get the item back. It's not an easy process to have an item returned to you from the post office. And the other thing that is feels like a disappointment is that Poshmark releases the funds back to the buyer right away. So there's really like no incentive on their part to really be like on the up and up when returning an item. And I have had cases where a person actually didn't return the item and they just mailed back a label. So that world exists. But long story short, I did give the buyer an opportunity to buy the sweater again. Next up, I sold a pair of 
from the full price sale. I picked these up and listed them, I don't even think a week ago. These are a pair of vintage Gramici climbing shorts. These are women's. They are purple. Typically you see gray, tan, kind of that colorway. In the 90s, they produced this style that looks like a little bit more acid washed. So this is a pair of their a little bit more acid washed style. I, I'm floored that these sold for $55 and I do believe that I built into my pricing strategy the ability to accept and entertain offers that provide the buyer with a value that they are looking for. And sometimes when I make a full price sale, like I did another item that'll be coming up in the video, it really feels like one of those pie in the sky moments where it's just like, wow, what if reselling actually had no offers involved? I did sell this lovely for $46.50 15% off, 55 in my closet, a Ralph Lauren seersucker shirt. Now this is a 3XLT, which means it is a 3X and it's also a tall. They have a big and tall line, and by they, I mean Ralph Lauren, and so this is a part of the big and tall line where they make extended sizes and a variety of lengths. I picked up, I believe, four 3XL, 2X, L B um, and all Ralph Lauren all have this little code in them that you can scan that authenticates it. One of them was linen. Two of them were just regular classic fit Oxfords that were short sleeve, but they were like a tie dyed pattern. I paid $8.99 for these. So let's see, $46. That's $36.80 after posh fees minus the $9 that I spent on this. So that is $28. <laughs> It's like sometimes I make my brain work in ways which are, uh, it's not really in the mood for. Like, hey, I'm not in the mood to work to calculate doing math while you're shipping and you're filming at the same time. <laughs> Can we just keep it to one lane here? I also think a surefire way to make faster sales is to buy extended sizes. Extended sizes, Ralph Lauren has a very hot market. This was probably posted two weeks ago. Searsucker is an incredible fabric. And so just a combination of the materials and the size. For me, $7.99, $8.99, I'm not hesitating if I know that I can post these items for $55. I sold a bundle of two packed organic items. One was a pair of leggings, brand new with tags that were recently just posted. Here is the packed organic logo. These do have a little bit of lint to them, but TBH, I am just gonna quickly hit them with my velvety one, which tends to pick up lint very easily from black items. You know, they are new with tags, so sometimes I feel like buyers need to have like a little bit of grace because items are going to come into contact with other items that may potentially leave some lint on them. The buyer also liked in my closet a packed organic tank top, just like a bra built in camisole style tank top. This is one of the last 
remaining items from 60 items that I picked up, 50 or 60 items, 60 items I think, that I picked up from the packed organic sample sale. The leggings were not a part of the sample sale. The leggings I just picked up about two weeks ago. I think on the same day when I got that Ralph Lauren actually. Back to my strategy for selling these two items. The buyer liked both of these items in my closet and I had them for maybe like 25 for the tank and probably like 36 to 38 for the pants. I offered 32 for both items. I had hmm, about $8 total into both items. So I felt comfortable in doing that, especially since the buyer liked both pieces and I knew that I wanted to try to move this tank top out of my closet. It truly is one of the last pieces that I um, needed to sell from that sample sale. So I quickly disclose if you're looking at me like what's going on? I have my frownies on. You know frownies are those like I'm 50 years old, wrinkle patches. I don't want to get Botox. I sold a pair of Dansko clogs. These are actually made in Poland. So these are an old style of Dansko clogs. I did put tissue in them um, to help kind of make them not look as floppy when they arrive. I sold the Danskos for $35 to an offer from a liker. I maybe have them in my closet because they are the style from Poland for a little bit more. I do find the European ones are worth a little bit more to people, especially people who love and I don't want to say collect dance shows, but they are big dance go wearers. I have a couple of fun things. Let's see, the first fun thing that I have is a vintage belt from the 90s. I had this in my closet for 45. The buyer sent me an offer for $20, which I declined. I have discussed this before. Um, sometimes I don't see where we're gonna meet when someone offers me over 50% off on an item. Like I just don't see where the meeting place is, what, all, what I would agree on and what she would agree on. To me, um, she just wanted a nice belt for 20 bucks which is totally fine. I don't really have a complaint about that. Everybody has their own kind of buying philosophy and I just declined. I will decline an offer. I've had people say before on Instagram, I always engage with buyers. I watch people all the time take offers of $9 on $32 items. That's not my business model. I'm never going to be that person. So I declined it because I wanted at least 30 some dollars for this belt. So the buyer actually came back with a $30 offer, which was $10 higher than her original offer. I've had it for quite some time, so I decided to accept it. And that's how the story of this belt being sold went down. So if someone says don't ever decline an offer, this is what I would like to say to that. You do you. This is your business. There is no one model that is going to guarantee you're gonna make sales. So, I mean, I guess accepting that offer would have guaranteed that I made the sale. The buyer could have just only wanted to spend $20, which I, I really don't like have any gripes or complaints about at all. Everybody has their threshold and I respect that something catches someone's attention they're gonna try to see how little they can pay for the item you know on Poshmark people want deals I am also running a business and from my average sales price of $42 I'm not running a $3 profit business I'm not random random I sold an air lounge that was my daughter's I'm gonna put the picture up of it and I'm actually not going to wrap this because like, who's 
wrapping in air lounge i mean come on now <laughs> let's find a cute mountain sticker and just put thank you for shopping small on the outside of the air lounge it has the carrying case all the original tags as i mentioned this was a christmas present for my daughter when she was in middle school she was a voracious reader and so this was kind of fun we could take it camping we could Oh, it's like a perfect fit in the, sh this is the shoe size box. So I sold the air lounge for $38 and I was surprised. I've had the air lounge in my closet for quite some time as well. It's a pretty unique item. So I'm excited. But as I have said a few times lately, it is camping season. I got a bank on this camping season. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to bank on the camping season. Okay, last item I sold. Last item I sold, my crowning jewel of the sales. A pair of Alden loafers. I'm actually gonna take these out just to show what the Alden logo looks like. I was kind of shook that I found these shoes. I was like texting immediately, like, you are not gonna believe what I just found. I found a pair of Alden loafers. I did it, I did it. Okay, so these Aldens have clear wear to them. And I actually noted that in the listing, like, hey, these are amazing. You can get them resold by the company. I don't know how much it costs, but these are the kind of heirloom quality shoes that you can own for a long, long time. These are going to Venice Beach. I love Venice Beach. I love that these are going to Venice Beach. I hope the buyer loves them. Alden shoes sold for $125. They clearly had wear to them. The sole had wear, um, and I did not leave them behind at the bin. I find there are certain subsects of brands that no matter how much wear the item has, people will be looking for them. People will buy them people will pay $125 for them. The reason why the buyer paid $125 for these was because these are $700 shoes. And really, the coolest part about these types of shoes is when the leather has a patina and they're worn in. If they're not cool when they're just regular plain old penny loafers, right? They're cool when they're worn in and it looks like you've had them for 10 years. I already provided that for the buyer. Those are all and of my items that I sold this weekend. And I really wanna start talking about how to focus your business model so you are selling items that make you a really great profit. You start selling items in that $36, $40 price range and stop accepting offers of $9 on items. Here we go. <laughs> Here's my shipping pile. Wow. Wow. You know what I'm really bad at? <laughs> and I watch a lot of YouTube videos and people are so much better at it than me. And that is just simply asking, like if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I would love for you to subscribe and then you just get notified when I have a new video. I'd really appreciate it. My channel is inching along very, very slowly. And I am really just trying to reach a bigger audience and just those little things help my channel grow so I can begin to make more content and videos that um, hopefully everyone will enjoy as much as I enjoy making them. I'm gonna put my friend Jelly Cat right here.
Thank you so much for watching. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.